Um, fellow Ghanaians, friends of Ghana, ladies and gentlemen, all protocols observed. Welcome, Enakwaba, to the launch of Destination Ghana. My name is Linda Wayo, and I will be your host for this event. Nana Adodankwa Ekufu Ado, President and First Gentleman of the Republic of Ghana, a belated happy birthday. Happy birthday, Mr. President. <laughs> May I add that 78 never looked this good. <laughs> we wish you the very best. Ladies and gentlemen, may I respectfully request for us to be on our feet as we give a resounding round of applause to the President of the Republic of Ghana. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. You may take your seats. And now to set the ball rolling, I would like to call upon Ghana's High Commissioner to the UK and Republic of Ireland, His Excellency Papa Oswan Kumar, to give us a welcome address. His Excellency Nanado Dankwa Akufuado, President of the Republic of Ghana. Honorable Shirley Ayoko Bushu, Minister for Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration. Honorable Dr. Ibrahim Awa, Minister for Tourism, Arts and Culture. Of course, my colleague, High Commissioner of the United Kingdom to Ghana, this Harriet Thompson. And it's a pleasure to see you, uh, Mr. Pierre Laporte, World Bank Country Director. Sakusia Jiman, Chief Executive of Ghana Tourism Authority. And the Dean of the African Diplomatic Corps in the United Kingdom, my colleague, Ambassador Estranas had plan of Eritrea. Nananum Nime, Name, Togbeo, Mamao. It is a pleasure to welcome you all to the launch of Destination Ghana, a sequel to the earlier very successful year of return and beyond the return programs. At the heart of all this, President of the Republic, whose foremost desire is not only for the African diaspora to go back to their roots, but also to get them to discover Ghana. I extend a special welcome to you for graciously honoring us with your presence as a special guest. As we all know, since the advent of the COVID-19 pandemic, the world has lost close to six million lives, countless number of jobs, with significant shortfalls in the supply chain and downturn in national economy. Some countries have recorded the highest inflationary rates in 30 years, with some people said to be said to be experiencing the worst living standards in over 50 years. But one of the worst affected areas affected by the pandemic is tourism. Of course, significant revenues have been lost. It is said that globally, tourism is presently at about 60 to 65 of its pre-pandemic volume. The trade and investment regime between Ghana and the UK also showed a decline in 2021 after the significant gains in the period preceding the pandemic. And the adverse impact on Ghana's tourism from UK is also evident in the total number of visas issued to people traveling to Ghana in the last three years. In 2019, just before the active spread of the pandemic, over 55,000 visas were issued by the Ghana High Commission in the United Kingdom. However, this took a significant nosedive in 2020, with barely 19,000 visas issued. With vaccination numbers having increased in 2021, visas issued rose to approximately 32,000. And indeed, in the first quarter of this year, we have seen over 10,000 visas being issued. So we anticipate that the peak period between July and December 
we'll see a much more remarkable rise in numbers. It is for this reason that the launch of Destination Ghana at this time in the United Kingdom is most opportune, as we are certain it will drive the number of visitors and tourists from the UK to Ghana higher and draw the much needed attention to Ghana for a surge in trade, investment and tourism. Ladies and gentlemen, this evening's event, I'm told, is aimed at starting a comprehensive stakeholder trade and consumer engagement to showcase the vast tourist attractions and investment opportunities in Ghana. Of course, the huge success of the year of return shed light on Ghana and brought it to the fore as a preferred tourist destination in Africa, together with its historical connections to most diasporas of African descent and friends of Africa. Ghana has untapped resources, and it is very much open to investment, given its conducive, business-friendly environment. The Ghana High Commission in the UK is also ready to facilitate travel to Ghana with good customer service delivery as its staff undergo regular and continuous training in customer service delivery. Ghana, with its cultural heritage, globally acknowledged hospitality of its generally warm people, beautiful weather, political stability, safe security, and then, of course, first-class culture with its resplendence demonstrated by the presence of our chiefs here. It is the place indeed to do business. And so to our sibling Africans in the diaspora, I tell you that Ghana is the place for you to rediscover and retrace the roots of your ancestors as they embark on their journey from home some 500 years ago. You will be accorded an excellent welcome when you come to Ghana, a welcome led by the President himself, hence his presence here with us. So, I entreat you all to enjoy this evening and also have a taste of Ghanaian products and I believe some of our cuisine and dare visit Ghana. Invest in Ghana. Do business in Ghana. Acquire landed properties in Ghana. And together, let us make Ghana down bounce back better after the ravages of the global pandemic. On behalf of myself, the staff of the Ghana High Commission in the UK and Ghanaians in the UK, I welcome you, Mr. President, and all others to the United Kingdom. Have an enjoyable evening. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, for the warm welcome. At this juncture, I would like to acknowledge the presence of all heads of department at the Ghana High Commission UK, Mr. Paul Adam Autry, Board Chairman and Board Chairman of Ghana Airports Limited and host of Good Evening Ghana, Mr. Hugh Kwashi, renowned actor from Holby City, representatives from the High Commission of the Kingdom of Essawini, Mr. Fuad Mohammed, MD of Coco Board UK Limited, Mr. Emmanuel Kwason, Chairman of Ghana Union, and Mr. Akwesi Sapom from the BBC. Thank you for taking time out to join us. Ladies and gentlemen, even though you may by now have a fair idea of why we are gathered here, I'm sure you're quite intrigued to find out a bit more about this initiative called Destination Ghana. In Ghana, we call the delivery of the purpose of gathering a manier. I would therefore now call upon Mr. Akwesi Ajiman, CEO of the Ghana Tourism Authority, to deliver the manier for us.
His Excellency Nana Adudankwa Ekufuado, President of the Republic of Ghana, Ministers of State, my boss, the Minister of Tourism, Arts and Culture, the Action Man, as I call him, ambassadors here in Gadded, senior government officials from the Republic of Ghana, distinguished guests, I stand on the existing protocols to welcome all of you to today's global launch of Destination Ghana. Two years ago, on the back of a very successful year of return, we look forward to even more success. But we had a rude awakening with COVID-19, which brought our industry globally on its knees. Today, thanks to the excellent leadership of His Excellency the President, and thanks to the easing of restrictions of COVID-19, we are here to announce to the world that Ghana is open and ready. We are here to invite you to the center of the world, the center of fun, center of leisure, center of adventure, and the center of culture. Destination Ghana is a platform for us to start a comprehensive stakeholder engagement, trade engagement, consumer engagement, and media engagement. With us here today, we have tour operators who have come in from Ghana, led by the Tour Operators Union of Ghana, Madam Alisa Asamoah. If you're here, can you give us a wave? Also with us, we have Mrs. Bridget Markwe from Mipes of Stality, Akusia Furi and Sam from San Sique Stores, Sam Sindin from African Origin Travel and Tours, and then Yvonne Donko, Secretary from the Tour Operators Union of Ghana. These are our partners who are here with us to engage the UK-based tour operators, promoters, and other interested groups who organize programs in Ghana. And here I want to single out my friend Denis Teria, who since 2001, on his platform, Aquaba UK, has been connecting the African diaspora. Denis, you've been doing this for 20 years, and now we've leveraged that into Destination Ghana and also December in GH. We also want to acknowledge Eddie Caddy. Eddie. Made of Afro Nation, Mavis from Ghana, Miss Ghana UK, and all the other event promoters. You've been doing a very great job helping us to market Ghana and put Ghana on the map. This is just the beginning, and as we launch Destination Ghana today, we're going to continue that engagement with all event promoters, tour operators, advertising companies, and more importantly, the media. This launch is just the beginning. We want to use this platform to invite you to the center of the world once again. As I indicated, the center of fun, the center of leisure, the center of adventure, the center of culture, and the center of pure nature. Once again, we welcome you to this evening's event. Thank you for agreeing to be part of our evening. Thank you and enjoy the Tourism Authority, as well as the High Commission, for hosting this important event and for your commitment to excellence in promoting tourism development in Ghana. I would like to thank uh, His Excellency the President and Honorable Minister of Tourism, Arts and Culture for the kind invitation for the World Bank to participate in today's event. Your Excellency, I would like to start by recognizing the role of the diaspora and the private sector in tourism development in Ghana. Private sector-led growth, as we all know, is critical not just to Ghana as economic uh, post-pandemic growth, but to the world, especially in the context today in the tourism space. And there are a few reasons why. First, because it's a challenge. A key question is whether the economy will sustain sufficient growth in 2022 and beyond. 
Today, as we all know, with all that's going on in the world, it's a big question mark. Secondly, because the private sector was hurt in the last two years by the COVID pandemic. And thirdly, because the capacity of the public sector to provide counter-cyclical support has its own challenges. So how is the World Bank supporting the tourism sector in Ghana? We are doing so primarily through the Ghana Tourism Development Project. The Ministry of Tourism, Tourism, Ghana Tourism Authority, as well as other stakeholders, both public and private. The project aims to promote investments and firm growth through three main interventions. First, supporting measures for a more conducive tourism and neighboring environment, such as policy work, legal and regulatory reforms, branding, marketing, capacity building, etc. Secondly, supporting the development of tourism destination sites from the small to the mid-sized ones, as well as to the large ones, the iconic sites, selected national parks and reserves. Thirdly, we've been supporting SMEs with grants that are active in all subsectors of the tourism sector, from retail to wholesale to services, and in the period of COVID and post-COVID recovery. The tourism development project, the World Bank is also investing in the tourism sector, not only because Ghana has the potential to become a leading tourism destination for heritage, arts, culture, and business in the region, but also because we believe in the sector as a driver for inclusive growth, which is at the heart of everything we do at the World Bank. The tourism sector already represents just under 6% of the total economy and employs close to three quarters of a million people. Through this project, we are supporting the government of Ghana to improve the quality and attractiveness of the tourism sites, as I said, training tourism workers, and improving business environment for tourism. I've discussed a lot with the Honorable Minister, and there's still a lot more that we want to do together. On well, that note, Your Excellency, let me just uh, be a quick tribute to my brother, Minister Wall. When I first met him about this time a year ago, we had a tourism project for $40 million, which after three years had disbursed only $4 million. In the space of 12 months, Minister Zephyrs and his team we, were about to disperse $12 million in only 12 months. So really, super work by him. And uh, Your Excellency, I would urge you to encourage the rest of your cabinet members to really do the same because the nightmare of a country director is to have money approved that are not being dispersed. <laughs> because every time we do not spend the one dollar, we deprive the Ghanaian people of the opportunity to improve their lives. So really, I urge you to do that. <laughs> At the World Bank, we pay great attention to public-private dialogue mechanisms, and uh, we consult the diaspora and private sector stakeholders systematically in the design and implementation of our projects. Today's forum is one such mechanism, and we congratulate you for this initiative. We are confident that the discussions will help align support to and from the diaspora and private sector and light a path towards further development of the tourism sector in Ghana. In closing, Your Excellency, on behalf of the World Bank Group, I would like to commend yourself for leading today's event to highlight the importance of tourism and broader trade and private sector development in Ghana. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Pierre Laporte, for your remarks.
Nana Adodankwa Akufuado, President of the Republic of Ghana. Dr. Awal, Minister for Tourism, Arts and Culture. UK's Trade Envoy to Ghana. Your Excellency Papa Wusu Ankuma, High Commissioner of Ghana to the United Kingdom. And also, I acknowledge UK's High Commissioner to Ghana. Also, the World Bank Country Director, government officials of the UK, members of the Diplomatic Corps, the CEO of Ghana Tourism Authority, esteemed traditional leaders, distinguished invited guests, compatriots, ladies and gentlemen. It is an honor and a privilege to be invited as a strategic partner to the launch of the Destination Ghana project. This laudable project being launched by the Ministry of Tourism, Arts and Culture as a follow-up to the Beyond the Return Drive aims at boosting inbound tourism from Europe and beyond to Ghana. We could not have chosen a better time for this launch. Promotion of tourism is a key objective of Ghana's foreign policy under the directive principles of state policy. Government therefore chose the tourism sector and the year of return project, which Ghana hosted in 2019, that brought together Africans, persons of African descent, and all well-wishers and lovers of freedom to strengthen our commitment to Pan-Africanism through diaspora networks. Indeed, several diasporans of African descent who have lived with us for many years as part of the year of return have been granted Ghanaian citizenship by His Excellency the President. In light of the successes attained, a diaspora engagement policy has been developed by government and is almost ready to roll out to strengthen as well as offer practical meaning to harnessing the enormous resourcefulness of our di diaspora and global diaspora networks. Ladies and gentlemen, over the years, we have witnessed significant contributions of the Ghanaian diaspora in critical sectors of our economy. The launch of the Destination Ghana project we are witnessing today is therefore in recognition of the contributions of the diaspora and government's efforts to enhance diaspora participation in our national development. The objective of the project is to improve the performance of our tourism sector through collaborating with Ghanaians resident abroad and peoples of African descent to effectively participate in national development in a structured way through the channeling of resources and remittances to promote entrepreneurship, support innovation, and develop priority sectors of our economy. Also, the Destination Ghana project is expected to advance government's development agenda by creating an enabling environment and utilizing the knowledge and skills of the diaspora to fill our resources and knowledge gaps. Indeed, there is more to achieve if we are to optimize gains from a structured engagement with our compatriots abroad and the global economy. Distinguished invited guests, our collective ability to effectively harness our human resources and capital, both at home and abroad, for national development is therefore the key to our advancement as a nation. Establishing close and productive partnerships with the Ghanaian diaspora and peoples of African descent with whom we have common ownership and shared values will no doubt inure to our common good. The diaspora engagement process includes identifying engagement goals, mapping diaspora geography and skills, building effective partnerships, as well as strengthening relationships of trust between the Ghanaian diaspora and governments of both Ghana and destination countries, and ultimately mobilizing the diaspora to contribute to sustainable development. For a country to harness enormous dividends from international migration, 
it has to guarantee the protection of its citizens abroad. This is why the promotion and protection of the interests and welfare of Ghanaians abroad is a cardinal objective of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration and Ghana's missions abroad. We invite you to partner with the Ministry of Tourism, Arts and Culture to make the Destination Ghana project a reality. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Honorable Shelley Ayoko Fotre, for your remarks. Before we move on to the next set, um, the next section of our program, I would like to acknowledge the presence of His Royal Highness Adonte Hine the First of UK, Her Royal Highness Nanahima Amonu Jempua Deborah Asante Fohima the First of UK, Nananum UK Ahimfo and Ahima the First and our beautiful Afro-Caribbean entertainer, Ms. Kay. Welcome and thank you very much for joining us. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, after having listened to all the wonderful reasons why we should be making our way to, to the podium. Thank you so much. <laughs> Ghana's Minister for Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration, Minister for Tourism, Arts and Culture, the UK Trade Envoy to Ghana, the World Bank Country Director to Ghana, Chief Executive Officer of the Ghana Tourism Authority, Ghana's High Commissioner to the United Kingdom, United Kingdom High Commissioner to Ghana, the Dean of the African Diplomatic Community, the Eritrean Ambassador to the UK, Nanamum, fellow Africans, fellow Ghanaians, ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for coming to participate in the launch of one of my government's flagship projects in our tourism sector, dubbed Destination Ghana. This Destination Ghana event, London event, is the first in a series of activities of the Destination Ghana project, which has as its core the objective of inviting and welcoming the rest of the world to visit Ghana, the center of the world, where you do not only have a majority of UNESCO's World Heritage Sites of listed forts and castles, but which is also home to some of the best flora and fauna in some of the most exquisite ecotourism sites of the world and to come across the taste of some of the richest and most diverse cultures of the world. And above all, to savor the incomparable, incomparable and ever welcoming warmth of a people uniquely placed in the center of the world and justly celebrated for their sense of hospitality. Four years ago, on 20th September, 2018, at the National Press Club in Washington, D.C., in the United States of America, I launched the Year of Return, the Diaspora Engagement Campaign, to commemorate in the following year, 2019, the 400th anniversary of the time when the first 20 West African slaves were brought in 1619 to the Commonwealth of Virginia which subsequently became part of the United States of America, thereby initiating one of the most inhumane and barbaric episodes of human history, the transatlantic slave trade. The year of return was a call on the African diaspora of the Americas and the Caribbean to return to Africa with Ghana as her gateway to signal our collective determination that never again will the African peoples allow themselves to be captured and sold into slavery as commodities in foreign unknown lands to help build their wealth, wealth from whose enjoyment they were largely excluded. It would provide a bridge for the reunification of the global African family to construct a new future of progress and prosperity 
for the black peoples of the world. And we'll also put the spotlight on Ghana's Pan-African credentials, showcasing Ghana's vision of bringing unity and dignity back to the process of social and economic development in Africa and in the African diaspora. 1,180,000 people visited Ghana in 2019 in response to the call. In the same year of 2019, Ghana was honored by her peers in the African Union as the choice to host the Secretariat of the African Continental Free Trade Area, AFCFTA. The AFCFTA covers a market of 1.2 billion people with a combined GDP of the US of 3 trillion United States dollars across the 54 member states of the Union that have signed up to the agreement. We have by this become the commercial capital of Africa. With a slow but steady recovery being witnessed in the tourism sector, after the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic, interest in nature-based adventure and le leisure tourism has grown, offering new opportunities to visitors. Ghana has an abundance of these offerings, and that is what we're here to present to the world, using our historical connection with Britain as a launch pad. Ladies and gentlemen, Ghana-Britain relations span several centuries and have improved over the years, especially in the post-colonial era of our independence. Even though Britain is no longer Ghana's number one trading partner, she remains a very important one. The impact of British institutions and values on Ghanaian life is visible and pervasive. Our legal system is closely fastened on the English common law model. Even the structure of the Ghanaian economy has often been described as the Gudgesburg economy, named after the British governor of colonial Gold Coast, Sir Frederick Gordon Gudgesburg, who was largely responsible in the early part of the 20th century for overseeing the development of the raw material producing and exporting economy that has been the main characteristic of Ghana this last century. Indeed, Britain, probably better than anyone else, knows of the considerable potential of our country. I believe that the tourism industry offers a great avenue to deepen Ghana-Britain relations for our mutual benefit. I believe that with the support of the Assembly of Captains of Industry, policy makers, government officials, and all who matter in the business communities of Britain and Ghana, we can turn the tourism and hospitality industry into a major tool for the positive transformation of the Ghanaian economy and into a win-win situation for investors. I believe we can, through our efforts, achieve a strategic cooperation that will see an increase in British tourism and investments into Ghana and the creation of jobs for our teeming youthful population. Ghana is not only gifted with a rich culture, but is also the best place for doing business in West Africa, as well as the safest and most stable country in the region. With a governance system that rests on the separation of powers, with an independent judiciary, promoting accountability in public life, and that respects the rule of law, human rights, and the principles of democratic accountability. Indeed, she has been for several years the recipient of the largest foreign direct investments in West Africa. Our focus over the next 18 months of this campaign is to exploit our culture, history, heritage, hospitality and beautiful natural scenery to attract tourists, fun lovers, and leisure seekers hoping to find a unique experience in Africa. Today we also provide an opportunity 
for Ghanaian-based travel and tour operators to reconnect with their British and European counterparts in what will be win-win offerings and partnerships. Ghana is open and ready to welcome you. Ghana is building a thriving tourism economy. Over the last few years, we have in addition to the abundance of natural resources embarked on a product improvement plan where several tourist sites in the country are currently undergoing site renovations. These include the Abri Botanical Gardens, modeled after the famous Q Botanical Gardens here in London, the Yas Antoine Memorial Museum, and the Kente Museum, both in Kumasi. Further, an aggressive sector skills development process under the Ghana Cares Obantampa program the 100 billion CD post-COVID economic recovery program of the country is currently ongoing under the auspices of the Ministry of Tourism, Arts and Culture and its implementing agency, the Ghana Tourism Authority. This year alone, it is expected that some 25 million United States dollars will be expended to upgrade some of our iconic sites including the famous Elmina and Cape Coast Castles, the Kwame Nkrumah Memorial Park, the Mole and Kakun Parks, and cultural museums in Yendi in the northern region, Ejisu in the Ashanti region, Akropong in the eastern region, and Ho in the Volta region, under the Ghana Tourism Development Project, supported by the World Bank. Additionally, I'm happy to note the funds will be directly injected into supporting SMEs in the hospitality and beverage sector. I'm eagerly awaiting the expedited conclusion of negotiations with the World Bank, which is intended to culminate in additional financing to boost the tourism, arts, and culture sector. It is in this regard that Ghana rec the government recognizes and highly commends the partnership of the World Bank in supporting Ghana's socio-economic transformational agenda. I acknowledge the efforts of the dynamic country director of the World Bank, Mr. Pierre Laporte, <laughs> in the Tourism Development Project, an initiative jointly implemented by the government of Ghana and the World Bank. This $40 million project is expected to position the tourism and hospitality sectors as key drivers of social and economic development. Some of the benefits that the project is expected to bring are enriched access to Ghana's tourism market, better provision of tourism products and services, and the upgrading of skills in the labor force in the tourism, arts, and culture sector. Ghana needs the support of business partners like the members of the audience gathered here. And I'm challenging the Ministry of Tourism, Arts and Culture and its agencies to ride on the back of the Destination Ghana project to help attract by 2024 one million tourists annually from Britain and Europe. I've made my contribution, done my bit, <laughs> by lifting a week ago virtually all the COVID-19 restrictions. <laughs> including the opening of all of Ghana's borders to enhance movements in and out of Ghana, while still maintaining the hygiene protocols, like the wearing of face masks at indoor events. Arguably, the most renowned of Catholic theologians, prolific writer, an eloquent preacher, St. Augustine said, and I quote, the world is a book, and those who do not travel read only one page, unquote. <laughs> I want to invite you, here in London and Britain, Europe and the rest of the world, to the center of the world, where longitude zero degrees crosses latitude zero degrees. 
where the bright sunshine enriches the quality of the skin and bodies of all, where music, dance, and culture not only create fun, but also excite the body, soul, and mind for spiritual growth. Indeed, I welcome you to Ghana, the center of the world, to enjoy our famed hospitality and take advantage of our favorable investment climate. I thank the organizers of this event for this invitation, and I look forward to welcoming all of you to Ghana, the Black Star of Africa. And as I conclude, I want to use the occasion to single out for special praise the work of Ghana's Minister for Tourism, Arts and Culture. Haji Awal Mohammed, Ibrahim Awal. He's proving to be a pillar of my government. <laughs> Accordingly, I have the great pleasure to launch up destination Ghana. May God bless the peoples of Ghana and Britain and may God bless our homelands, Ghana and Britain, and make them great and strong. I thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Mr. President. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Destination Ghana is duly launched. So please tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend about the amazing things Ghana has in store. I'm mentally prepared and ready to go to Ghana. I just need to get my Ghana must go bag, and then I'll be on that plane. Good evening, His Excellency Nana Adidankwa Akufuadu, President of the Republic of Ghana and special guest for this occasion. Honorable Shelley Ayakobotri, Minister for Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration, Ghana. His Excellency Hapo Usankuma, Ghana's High Commissioner to the United Kingdom and Ireland. Honorable Dr. Ibrahim Mohammed Awal, Minister of Tourism, Arts and Culture, Ghana. Her Excellency, the British High Commissioner to Ghana, Harriet Thompson, Baroness Hoy, UK Trade Envoy to Ghana, His Excellency, Mr. Pierre Laporte, World Bank Country Director to Ghana, Mr. Akwesi Ajiman, Chief Executive of Ghana Tourism Authority, Nananum, distinguished invited guests, friends from the media, permit me to stand on all existing protocols. Fellow Ghanaians, ladies and gentlemen, I deem it a great honor to deliver the vote of thanks at this prestigious ceremony. Your Excellency, the fact that you make time to be here personally, in spite of your busy schedules, is a clear indication of the importance you attach to the international promotion of Ghana. I would therefore like to thank you enormously for gracing this occasion with your fatherly blessing to endorse the campaign on Destination Ghana. Again, I would like to thank His Excellency Papa Usa Nkuma, our ever supportive High Commissioner for the role he and his office continue to play in ensuring the welfare and well-being of Ghanaians in the UK and Ireland. I would also like to thank in particular Honorable Dr. Ibrahim Mohammed Awal and Mr. Kwesi Ajiman for their relentless efforts to revive and promote tourism in Ghana in the post-COVID-19 era. I would also like to thank all the partners and sponsors for the successful launch of the Destination Ghana campaign roadshow. Thank you to Paul and Linda and the team for the meticulous planning of the event. I know it hasn't been easy, but you couldn't have done a greater job. Our next stop of the campaign launch which I'm extremely proud of, would be in my adopted home, Luton, in Bedfordshire. Where in the 2020 municipal year, in the heat of the COVID-19 pandemic, I was elected mayor, becoming the first African Ghanaian mayor of Luton. As I end 
this vote of thanks, I would like to thank the numerous guests and friends of Ghana for warmly participating in this launch. Most importantly, I would like to thank the Almighty God who continues to shower his blessings upon our dear nation in spite of all the global challenges. Currently, the Ministry of Youth and Sports and the Ghana Paralymp Paralympic Committee is in active discussions with Luton Council to host them for the upcoming Commonwealth Games, which would be held in Birmingham in July. I'm glad to say that ahead of the Qatar FIFA 2022 World Cup, it is my prayer that God will grant our black stars favor to be successful. May history be made that victory, no doubt, will make Ghana the ultimate destination for tourism and events. Thank you all for coming and enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you. Thank you very much. pay. The U.S., when they borrow money, they're getting it in 1.5, 1.9 interest rate. Africans, when they get the same amount of money, they're paying 9, 10 percent. The people who don't need a break, they get a break. The ones who need a break, they don't get a break. The sheer survival of the World Bank IMF is based on the fact that African countries and, and many other developing countries do not succeed. Their success is based on our failure. That has to change. And guess who can make that change? We the children of Africa, we, the Africans, are the ones who have to say, we know your game now. Enough is enough. We're not playing it anymore. And this is where the diaspora come in. There are more Ghanaian doctors in New York City than in, in the entire country of Ghana. There are more doc Nigerian doctors in LA than in the entire country of Nigeria. So let's be serious here. What Africa needs is capacity, capacity, capacity. And that capacity is in the diaspora. So it behooves us to bring the diaspora together. Let them understand what is really going on in our Africa. Diaspora are not going home. Diaspora are angry about Africa because they are not understanding the root cause of why Africa is where it is today. They think getting rid of a president will take care of the problem. Far from it. That president is just going to be replaced by another one who is going to equally suffer from the same difficult environment to work in. So let's look at an Africa that must be free to take care of herself, an Africa that's free from exploitation from outsiders. The multinationals who are stealing from Africa every day in broad daylight. I use an example of the DRC. If you ever fly very low over the DRC, you'll see tarmacs in the jungle. You'll see 747s flying into DRC, picking up minerals and flying right out. The same multinationals are responsible for arming young people and giving them MK-16s. Because why? Their satellites in the skies are telling them where that village is. There's, there are lots of diamonds. So what do they do? Arm young people, drag them up, and send them to go chop off a few heads. The rest of the village runs away, so they come behind and do their illegal mining. We black people must understand what is really going on. Because what we are shown instead is, oh, look at those Africans killing each other. There are some serious games that have been played in Africa for far too long. And once we understand that, we can strategize as to how we can begin to bring the difference and bring the change that Africa needs. And that change can only come if the African diaspora are united and the Wakanda villages, as I call them. It is our organized way of saying, starting with one African diaspora center of excellence, it will be a new city, a developmental hub that we can then take from there Every sector is developed. Take healthcare. How many doctors do we need in this region to take care of this many people? We pick up education, same thing. We pick up engineering. We pick up electricity. How many megawatts of power do we have in the region? How many do we need? Be it solar, be it wind, be it hydro, be it geothermal, be it nuclear. She says she shall cook on a man, none who suit dead dead dog, no much chain, come on, no days bundle and any jabbia, no no Boris B's chicken. BBC Nerje. Yes, she a coconama area na kai the good old taste of a fiacoco. <laughs> yeah, Boris B's chicken. BBC Fresh, tasty, delicious. Delicious, delicious. Bra Boris B's chicken, BBC. Na bejo full frozen chicken. Gizzard. Chicken feet, chicken neck, no chicken liver. 
Missy, if you fool in your budget one day, Seri a party. Exclusive recluse Decatur's Hotel, located at Kwaoma, the Bain Soko Bain Road. Book in for your weddings, parties, wedding refreshment, engagements, corporate meetings, all manner of functions at an affordable rate. Comfortable rooms at an affordable rate. Your home for everything you need. Any other food? The Catus Hotel, a monochian, a Oklahoma. Mobi Timia Koyemu Bibia, a whole book here, or parties, or engagement, corporate, a penny for a person, Mokoyemu parties, Mokoyemu Bibia, or the Catus, a Oklahoma, or down the bank, soccer bank road. Okwa rooms, you know, at the phone book or be a more engagement, more so a more christening, more more all manner of parties and functions. Offices for an asset and penny for a more person meeting so and also book here at the phone book or be out as a local general home, be a soft food, be an air family beer, more pebble beer, cosia, more bed drink to them home, or being in a door for more cocoa pebble beer, share more bed drink to them home. The cartus, mm. your home for everything. Who drew a soon by Joe, a home so you come up into the animal. The cartus hotel, your home for everything you need. Monko Sunway, Namuba, who say, Mom, what you to crown swan ban? More bar, moon bookie, moon bookia, mobile banner, which yes, 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 which you come, 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 come. Into the cartus hotel, your home for everything.